Today on Lifestyle Magazine, at least 4.5 million American kids are being raised by their grandparents, and the number is growing. You're about to meet some of those amazing grandparents. Their stories could be yours. And now, the hosts of Lifestyle Magazine, Dan Matthews and Mike Tucker. You're about to meet a lady whose own life experience sensitized her to the special needs of grandparents and the children they raise. She is the founder of an organization called Grandparents as Parents. She's the author of this book, Grandparents as Parents, A Survival Guide for Raising a Second Family. This is kind of the Bible for grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. Please join me in welcoming Sylvie D. Toledo. Thank you for having me. Yes. I appreciate it. So Sylvie, tell us what experience did you have which made you aware of the needs of grandparents who are raising their own grandkids? Well, in 1983, I was just graduating with my master's degree in social work, and my sister passed away, unfortunately, leaving behind an eight-year-old nephew who had always sort of been a family child, but my parents took over being his legal guardian right away. And when I started doing outpatient therapy with children and families in an agency, I started getting assigned a lot of children who were also being raised by their grandparents. And in those days, 20 years ago, it was primarily grandparents. Now there are a lot of aunts, uncles, cousins mm -hmm. who are raising nieces and nephews. However, I was seeing that all of the families felt that they were the only ones in this situation. And I was seeing at home what was happening for my parents and for my nephew in the same way as I was seeing it in treatment with these families and felt that there had to be a way to get these families together to provide some mutual support for each other because the common thread was that everyone felt that they were alone in this situation and didn't have any place to talk about their feelings of frustration and anger and resentment and sadness and <sighs> loss and grief. and how to deal with parenting children maybe 20 years after they had no children for 20 years later when mm -hmm. they'd had no children in their home and how things had changed and how the children came to them with a myriad of problems from academic to medical to behavioral to psychological to emotional problems and we really needed to provide a network where they could talk about and get information and resources so I started the first group in 1987 and it's just mushroomed since mm -hmm. then and we're now a nonprofit organization sort of a one-stop shop for relative caregivers. Well, that's great. Now, I, I think the acronym you have for grandparents as parents, GAP, is so neat. Yeah. Because it, it, it expresses what you're trying to do. It is a how, generation gap. How, ex, how extensive, I mean, we've all heard about this, silly, but how extensive is the uh, need for grandparents as parents? There is a huge need for relative caregivers, and what people don't understand is that so many of our families give up their own um, hopes and dreams and retirement and mm -hmm. change the lifestyle, you know, to take in kids that otherwise would be going to foster home and siblings who would be split up. And what the grandparents really want to provide is some consistency and some roots for these children and a sense of family. And people don't really understand. They give up their whole life for their grandkids. And... I think that not enough recognition is given to relative caregivers and we really need to do more to provide resources and information and and meet the needs of the grandchildren that they're raising and the nieces mm -hmm. and nephews and the cousins because again so many of these kids have so many special needs like you said. Right. Well you watched your own parents go through this then. Yes, my nephew now is 30 I'll be will be 33 years old. This Did they have this, this kind of a network uh, when they were raising your nephew? No, they didn't and they certainly wish that they had and mm -hmm. that's primarily why I started this whole organization was because I saw firsthand the problems that arose in my own family and then they were mirrored with the families that I was working with. Right. And so it's just mushroomed. What are the the causes of this? I mean, why is it that so many grandparents end up raising their grandkids? The primary reason, unfortunately, is parental drug and alcohol abuse. However, there are many other reasons, mental illness, abuse, neglect, abandonment for various reasons, um, suicide, murder. For a while, we were seeing a, ri a rise in spousal murders, um, and a lot of kids were coming to us. A lot of grandparents were coming to us because their sons or daughters had been murdered by a spouse, um, illness, a physical illness, mm -hmm. death due to a medical illness, not just suicide. Mm -hmm. And so the the reasons are varied, but the primary reason is parental drug and alcohol abuse. 
Uh, we're doing this program because there is a need. There are people who suffer in these experiences. And uh, how, how does a person know to contact GAP, for example? Well, we get referrals from grandparents, from word of mouth, from a lot of publicity things that we do, working with the Department of Children and Family Services and other agencies. And um, we put out our information everywhere that we can so that we can reach as many families as possible. I have grandparents who have met at the park or mm -hmm. grandparents who, all the grandparents have my cards and they've met grandparents in the bank or the supermarket or the uh, or court a lot of grandparents end up having to go to court mm -hmm. frequently and so they'll by word of mouth give grandparents my name and number and people call me but you aren't the one who takes care of all of these grandparents what what about group support well, the group is the most amazing thing, and you'll see when you talk to some of the grandparents who are part of the group, it really becomes more of an extended family for the families that participate. It's not just a two-hour-a-week support group. The families have really come together to help each other. For example, mm -hmm. I've had families have bought new cars and gave an older vehicle to a family who had no transportation. Other grandparents, when they become ill or hospitalized. Mm -hmm. Other grandparents have stepped in so that the grandchildren don't have to be separated and placed in foster care right. and taken them into their home for months at a time. Well, we want to get to some of these stories. And in fact, we're going to visit, I know, with some grandparents who are raising their children. So coming up on Lifestyle Magazine, you're going to meet two grandparents who had to face that reality, parenting again at a time when they were totally unprepared for it. Coming up next, right here on Lifestyle. You can learn English at home. Watch Hello Channel. Joining us now are Velma Brown and Gus Barakamonte. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for joining us here on Lifestyle. So, Velma, tell me, how was it that you came to parent your grandchildren? Well, the, my grandkids came down from Fresno and their mother their father was getting a divorce to live with me. Mm -hmm. And they started school here. And she took him to school one morning and she came back and said that her stomach was hurting. We took her to the hospital to get some antibiotic. And that night she was dead. So that means that I had two grandkids that I had to raise. And I'm 76, my husband's 77. And the grandkids, my grandson reverts back to a five-year-old. He was in Cal State Northridge. Then I had to get a letter written to have him on a medical leave for the simple reason he could not study at the time. So not only have you lost your daughter, but your grandson, who was 17, 18 years old, is suddenly behaving as a five-year-old. Exactly. And I put both of them in counseling, and they are doing pretty good now. But... I met Sylvia's group from my son. He was mm -hmm. at a con uh, convention, and a friend of his gave him a card, and I went to the meeting. And that's when I met the other grandparents that was having problems just like I was having. But I thought I was the only one right. having problems because I was the only lady 76 years old with two teenagers <laughs> that had to go to PTA meetings and, and school and all that. And I was the only driver in the family. That's so overwhelming. That, uh, that means I had to drive everybody everywhere. <laughs> and not only that, but Velma didn't have a chance to grieve the loss of her own daughter because right. she got the two grandkids immediately. Well, and there's so, a whole issue of taking care of herself. And, right. and her own right. medical problems. Right. Yeah. I have uh, multiple myeloma, and that's a bone cancer. Then I had breast cancer. Then I had a heart attack. And, I and you're had, raising teenagers. Yes. Raising teenagers. You know, she's a wonderful testimony, Sylvie, for your organization, yes, though. For her to come here with this marvelous smile, and we've just gotten acquainted with her. Yes. She is so much fun to know. She is. Your organization must do wonders for people. Uh, what's happened in your life, Gus? Uh, my wife, Julia, and I took over seven grandchildren, teenagers. Seven. Oh, my word. To a one-and-a-half-year-old. She got into drugs. Oh, my and uh, they were going to be placed into a foster home. So we took over. 
after he had gone into semi-retirement. Okay. So that changed our lifestyle, and uh, we had to find a, a bigger place to live mm -hmm. in, and it took us a while. But uh, we managed to help, and then through the Department of Children and Family Services, we found about found out about the Selby's group. Right. And we went to the first meeting, and uh, it was wonders, like uh, like uh, Velma said. It, we weren't the only ones involved uh, about the situations. Everybody was different, and mm -hmm. so we kind of said, okay. So, so, so how many others are there raising seven grandkids? <laughs> uh, in our group? Yes, uh, in your group. I think there's an aunt that has. Is that right? So you, re same. you really are not alone, are you? No. and uh, <laughs> Even with those numbers? And it's some have moved out, and now I have two great grandkids that um, one is uh, five years in old. In your home. In my home, and the other child is only three months old. That That's incredible. Were... What, what, go ahead, Dan. No, I, uh, how, how, do, how do people manage things like this, Sylvie? I, I'm, I'm glad that you can have a group where you can smile at each other and say that everything's <laughs> going to be fine and all of that, but... But it's not always everything is going to be fine. I mean, there's lots of times we have groups where there's a lot of tears shed. Yes. It's not always. And, and a lot of joy and laughter because the families really bond together as an extended family and they help each other. And so you know that there's always someone that you can call no matter what your need is. Hmm at any time, day or night. Whether you need respite care, you need to go to the yes. doctor and you need to drop your grandchildren off at someone's house for an afternoon. Whether you're diabetic and you don't have money for the right kind of food, somebody's gonna show up at your doorstep with mm -hmm. a bag of groceries that are healthy foods yeah. for you to eat. Whether it's you need transportation to a group or a doctor's appointment and your car broke down, there's always someone you can call that's gonna help you get to where you need to go or do what you need to do. You need to go to court. You're not sure what papers to fill out and who, who to talk to or what to do. There's always somebody. How does this information get distributed uh, in the group so that those kind of bases are covered? How, how, I, I'm still... We have weekly therapy support groups. I facilitate three, but there are several in, in Los Angeles County that are facilitated by other facilitators as well. And so the groups all get together. Is GAP Southern California then? Yes, it is. Okay. How, how does somebody else in the other parts of the country who are going to learn about GAP say, uh, we want GAP? How, uh, are well, there other chapters? We have a website, www.grandparentsasparents.com, and we also have phone numbers, 818-789-1177 and 818-264-0880 and 310-839-2548. Yeah. And there's always someone who's going to be able to help you on the other end, That's correct. whether it's to get the resources you need or to help you start a group or to give you a referral to a lawyer. Whatever it is you need, we're a one-stop shop. Okay. So now, I, I, I've got to, excuse me, Mike, but we, I've got to ask, do you people with all of your burdens, are you able to help other people as well? Yeah. With uh, situations that might have, uh, that we've been through and the other grandparent right. or relative care didn't go through, then we might be able to advise or, That's or marvelous. explain yeah. something to them. So we, we never, we really are not alone, are you? No. No. And I, like she said, excuse, can I say something? Go ahead. <laughs> like she said, that we help each other. Okay. When I joined the group, I didn't have enough transportation. I had an old right. beat up pickup truck for me and my wife. I didn't have no transportation for all the kids. One of the other grandparents donated a van to me. That's incredible. With, I had just That's met incredible. Them. Well, grandparents take on responsibilities that make a huge difference in their lives and in the lives of grandchildren. You'll meet two more right after this short break. Learning a new language can be difficult and discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. Hello, I'm Karen, introducing Hello Channel, the revolutionary new channel designed especially to teach English. If you can speak English, the future is open for you, since speaking English means greater opportunity and higher paying jobs. By watching Hello Channel, you are immersed in this valuable language. You'll hear the words being spoken. You'll see the speakers' mouths when they say the words. 
you'll read what's being spoken in large, clear subtitles, and you'll speak out loud, practicing what you have just learned. There is no better or faster way to learn a language than total immersion. Hello Channel does exactly that. There's programming on every level so you can watch the shows that are just perfect for you. Whether you've spoken a little English, a great deal of English, or none at all, the Hello Channel has something for everyone. Join us for a convenient, affordable, and fun way to shape your future. There's so much in store for you if you'll just say hello. Joining us now are two wonderful grandmothers. Diane Ellison is on my immediate right, and sitting right next to her is Sue Stutz, and both of them are busy mothers of their grandchildren. So, Diane, tell me, how is it that you came to raise your grandkids? Well, the two oldest, I got it one and two. There was a knock at the door at two o'clock in the morning. There stood two police officers holding these two boys in diapers, and it was a split-minute decision. It was either I took them or they went to foster care. Oh, my. And I was only nine hours post-op from cataract surgery. You're kidding me. No, <laughs> and I took them. And I ended up having to go to court, and I was granted legal guardianship at that time. Hmm. And then the little girl, who's now 10, um, the hospital called me. I had no idea. The hospital called me and said that they were taking the child away from my daughter hmm. at birth, and I could come down and get her, or she was going up for adoption. Well, I made it from my house to UCLA in 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got the little girl. So th there were some big changes in your life as a result of this. Oh, yeah. I had just retired. Basically, I had done foster care. I had, this is it. This was my time. I re redid my house. I had satin brocade sofas. I mean, it was an adult house. Right. It wasn't for long because <laughs> I had a one-year-old and a two-year-old, yes. two in diapers, two in oh. bottles. Neither one of them walked. Oh I lived upstairs. But we managed to survive. We managed to get through it all. Unbeknownst to me, all three children had Becker's mus muscular dystrophy, which we didn't find out until 2003. 2003. So, uh, how did you get in touch with Sylvie? I've known Sylvie for years. We, um, through the Department of Children and Family Services at different conferences. I was one of those stubborn ones. Come on. And finally, one day, one of my girlfriends says, come on, you got to go with me. Mm -hmm. And here I am, and I've been with them ever since. <laughs> I, I'm curious. But we had talked uh, on the phone, too. Uh, right. Is that right? You, you said... Uh, the knock came in the door and it was a split. This is the first indication you've had about anything coming like this? Mm, I never thought they would take the children from her. You know, you always hope, it's my daughter, mm -hmm. you always hope they're going to get better. But both the mother and father were drug addicts. All three children were born drug addicts, had to be detoxed. Oh, you j I just kept hoping. I didn't expect it, you know, I didn't expect that knock on the door. So what's Gap done for you? Uh, everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're there no matter what. Uh, Gus Bracamonte and his wife, mm -hmm. they took my children while I went to school and became a notary. Is that like, right? They didn't have enough. At that time, they had 10. Yeah. But right. they took so my three. just added a few more. Yeah, what's, what's three more, more when you got that many? Sue, what's your story? Well, it's, thank God... Not near as bad. Hmm. I'm one of the lower key people as far as problems are concerned. But my daughter was a drug addict, is, I don't think you ever was. Hmm. Hmm. And I have a special needs, my oldest 14 year old now uh, is a special needs child, which is unfortunately a disproportionate number of the children in the grandparents uh -huh. group uh -huh. are special, special needs. needs some far worse than others. So very often it's trauma that has brought them to this point. Yes. Where, where now grandparents need to raise them so they are special needs. Well, he was he's a uh, client of the regional center. He's high-functioning autistic. Okay. And uh, 
they basically told my daughter, because she was not parenting, that she had a choice. Mm -hmm. Either they took the ch child away from her, or mm -hmm. we, she gave him to us voluntarily. Voluntarily. He had already been living with us mm -hmm. for over a year. And the weekend he came to us just happened to coincide with my husband in the hospital uh, with cancer. Yeah, yours is a lightweight story, no doubt. <laughs> for the, for the group, break. unfortunately, <laughs> for the group, I, it, it is a lightweight story. Well, it doesn't sound lightweight to me. I'm sorry. I mean, there are people that have far worse problems. Well, what has Sylvie's group done for you? Oh, <laughs> well, I have to tell you, you know, President Bush Sr. talked about the thousand points of light. Yes. Right here. Mm. This is St. Sylvie. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't tell you what the grandparents do for each other and how, if it weren't for people like Sue and Diane, so many of the families wouldn't have what they need also because once, what's really nice is that once you get what you need from the group mm -hmm. and you keep coming, you're able to give to other people. And believe me, all the families you've met today and more give to others that are just coming in. So it's not just what I have done. I love what I do and I have a passion for it, but it's what the grandparents do for each other as well. Sylvie, uh, each of the grandparents that we've had the privilege of meeting today uh, impressed me of being such extraordinary people. I mean, these are individuals like uh, Diane here and Sue. I mean, they take on their grandchildren yeah. because they are their grandchildren. There are other circumstances that I think could be easily found where grandparents wouldn't do this. Are all of your grandparents of this extraordinary character? Yes, every last one of them. Short answer. <laughs> I get. They I guess all they deserve have to a be. gold medal for what they're doing. Indeed. That's you incredible. know, you ask what the group has done for us. My husband passed away three years ago. And within a two-year period of time, I had lost my mother, my sister nine months later, then a year later, my husband. Mm. So we were a very together, very close-knit family. And all of a sudden, I lost, oh, wow. I lost my whole spine. I lost everything that held me together. So Gap has really filled that gap and for you. Have not you? only have they filled the gap, but I am no longer alone. Wow. Wow. Mm. wow. We well, have Thanksgiving. Giving. Potluck we all got together. All together. We have Christmas Eve is at my house. Wonderful. New Year's Eve is at my house. Uh, we had a Passover at another person's mm -hmm. house. Every month there's a picnic. Um, since I'm a docent at the L.A. Zoo, mm -hmm. I get the children in <laughs> to uh, the zoo on a big bunny, oh, which is, is the exciting. Easter, this is and exciting. for uh, Boo at the Zoo. There's functions going on, and the children know that they are not alone. Oh, that's wonderful. There's other children out there like Well, I them. hate to cut you off, because I obviously you've got so much more to say, but we're going to have to move on. And we'll be right back with Lifestyle Magazine in just a minute. Well, why don't you just say hello? There's so much more that we could say today, but we've, we're out of time. Our thanks to Sylvie Di Toledo, the grandparents, Diane, Sue, Velma, Gus. For more information about grandparents as parents, check our website at lifestyle.org. And we'll see you next time right here on Lifestyle Magazine.